Okay, guys, and we are live. Welcome to the Freak Show. Uh, this is Freak Show number 17 uh, with our amazing guest. Uh, so, first of all, we have Stig. Stig, how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you indeed. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a good day in the UK, but it's going to be a good day. Very, very early in the UK. And our special guest, guys, the person we are super excited about, the coolest man on the planet, this is Paul <laughs> Kundalini. Yay! Yay! Reading, reading. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very lovely, very lovely introduction. introduction my, my, uh, you need, to get, you need to get out more often. <laughs> yeah. If I'm the coolest guy on the planet, you need to get out more often. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, but, but thank you. Excellent. So how are you, sir? How are you, Paul? I'm going very well, thank you. I'm um, I'm health, happy and healthy and adjusting to the new reality every single day. Oh, awesome. So whereabouts are you in the world for our audience? I live in Sydney, Australia, near the water. Um I um, live kind of near Bondi. I've been living here for, uh, wow, um, nearly 50 years. I'm a New Zealander originally. I was born and raised in New Zealand. Right, yeah. Uh, very, I'm a very proud Kiwi. Um, but uh, Australia has been my home and is where I've spent my entire adult life. Oh, my God. Wow. So hopefully you're enjoying the sunshine. We've had sunshine over here in the UK, um, uh, but yeah. I think this morning we've just had rain. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, rain. The hell you say? Rain. Yeah. Yes, rain. We'll, we'll send you a picture. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, then, Paul, just uh, just going back. How did you get into acting before Mad Max? Were you, did you do any acting before the film, or? Yes, I did. I um, <clears throat> I came from a um, a family that was quite a theatrical family. My uh, in the ho my hometown in New Zealand um, uh, had a an amateur repertory company called Playbox Theatre. But both of my parents were involved in that in amateur theatre. So from a very early age, I was going and seeing my both my mother and my father, yeah. and sometimes both together performing on stage. So I was around this this very ramshackle theatre, um, and in a in a town like Hamilton, um, a theatre, which is like a big country town, it's a centre of a dairy uh, dairy uh, region. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the theatre, it's quite a straight existence. I'm talking about in the late fifties, early sixties. Quite a quite a conservative uh, country town. So the the theatre places like the theatre company, like Playbox Theatre. Attracted all the fringe dwellers, as I call them. Yeah, you know the the, uh, the you know the, the beatniks, the communists, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the the gay community, the, the interesting yeah. people. Yeah, uh, yeah, the good people. Yeah, yeah. So I was around theatre from a very early age, seeing my parents acting in in musicals and in Harold Pinter plays and in uh, all manner of things. And then my father became, yeah. My father became very uh, became an actor himself. He, but he um, <clears throat> he used to run Friday night children's theatre groups. So that from the age of about nine, I was going to these children's theatre groups, and it was kind of I don't know. There wasn't kind of any question for me that that's what I wanted to do yeah. was be a performer, like in some way. But I didn't imagine I was actually going to be able to do it. Um, I just thought, oh, wouldn't that be good? Yeah. And um, and that was the influence. And I, yeah, I, I then uh, finished school, w moved up to Auckland, uh, which is north of Hamilton for a year, and then came to Sydney, intending to travel on to the UK with a couple of girls that I came over with. But oh, j j j just the two. Just the two, yeah. <laughs> good, very, very dear friends who I'm still good good friends with. Excellent. And um, they, I, about six weeks after I arrived, I um, auditioned for the cast of the original production of Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, wow. And, wow. And I got in to that show. Only two people would, like the show had opened two weeks before and a couple of people were leaving for some reason and, I did an open audition and somehow got the gig, and that that was my that was my door opening. That was my yeah, yeah. So it, that that changed 
the, the course of my life, both personally and professionally. Um, the almost every gig I've done since then, I can definitely see as a as a I can run a link yeah. back to that. And also my best friends in Australia. That became you know that became my family here. So um, yeah, that's how. The, <clears throat> excuse me. That's how I. Uh, so- uh, got so, 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 so oh, how did you initially hear about the Mad Max film, or how did you get involved? Be- because initially, the Mad Max one was very oh, low budget, oh. etc., and they sort of, you know, the, the way they were trying to fund the film. So, how did you first? How were you contacted? How did you hear about it? I, I literally got a call from my agent, and by that stage, I, I um, during Superstar, I got an agent, and I did. I did a, a several other musicals, um, a couple of little TV roles here and there. I was in the, the first Rocky Horror Show here wow. in Australia and, and, and a couple of other musicals. And then I, I literally got a call from my agent saying, um, because I rode a motorcycle, yeah. <clears throat> that was a big – they basically had a, ca- a cattle call for actors who rode motorcycles. And I went along to this audition and – I read for the role of Max. Oh wow! And I thought I, I thought I was very very special because I've been I was read I, I read for the lead yeah. role. Yeah. Until, yeah. until I found out afterwards that George had got every single male actor in there to read that role. <laughs> but, well, but what I've heard from Max from, from about George is it was probably actually the only role that had been written. It's probably uh, the only one he got some script for. <laughs> I, 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 I think he might have had it fleshed out a bit more by then. Yeah. Uh, well, some of the stories, it, the way the way he sort of builds up as he goes yeah. along. Well, hey, can I just ask you then? I, I didn't know about the the Rocky one. What was the role in Rocky? I began in Rocky Horror Show as the swing, the general understanding. Yeah. Yep. So I, I sang. This was in the original Sydney production, the original yep. Australian production. I sang in the offstage chorus, so up near the band, which was up on scaffolding beside the, the stage, and I sang all the backup vocals. But I had to be prepared on any given night to play, to play the narrator, uh, Riff Raff, or my favourite uh, was Eddie and Dr. Scott. Right, yeah. Oh, of course, of course. I played them a lot, and I ended up doing the show there. I ended up doing it another production in uh, Brisbane, uh-huh. and then... I did a production of Rocky Horror in New Zealand. I, um, a New Zealand production company came over and looked at maybe taking the Brisbane production over, then decided they'd do their own. Yeah. yeah. And I was cast in it, as was another of the Aust- original Australians who played um, Riff Raff. Right. And um, Frankenfurter was played by um, Gary Glitter. Oh, right. Oh, no. Paul Gatt. No way. Another Paul. Do you think I could look straight down the barrel and make that up? <laughs> no, very so, not. Very true. Gosh. That is impressive. No yeah. way. Yeah. Well, apparently the the producers of the show in New Zealand had um, had, had read somewhere that Richard O'Brien, who yeah. wrote Rocky Horror, yeah. Yeah. Who, who by the way is from my hometown, Hamilton, oh, oh in my New God. Zealand. I didn't know, know that. that. Oh my God. Yeah. He, hell, I'm writing all this down. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, get me along to your trivia night. I'll win, I'll win the, uh, the I'll win the meat tray for you. Um, they um, they read that somewhere in an interview that that um, Richard O'Brien had written the role of Frankenfurter based on his two favourite rock stars at the time, which were David Bowie and Gary Glitter. And Gary yeah. Glitter. Yeah. So they had a lot. They had a light bulb moment. David was a little bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> who, who else can we look around for? Yeah, yeah. So, David, David, you know what with being a bona fide genius and 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 superstar, was a little bit busy to go to go do a production of Rocky in New Zealand. But Gary wasn't, so we toured with oh Gary. Oh yeah. wow! Oh wow! And how long was that for? Um, about altogether about three and a half months. Oh my god! Blimey. Wow! wow. So, Rehearsal period in Wellington, and then yeah, yeah. We, all us all in a minibus driving to different venues. So it was lovely because it was my my return to my homeland and yeah, coming yeah. Back, coming back in the in the first ever production of Rocky Horror. So Absolutely. it was uh, 
rather special. Oh, my. oh that's fantastic. My, my, my ex, um, she saw the first one at... Um, uh, whatever the, um, the the small theatre is in London, um, she was in. She was uh, like doing ice. She was um, a professional ice skater, uh, and a friend of hers said, "Oh, do you want to come along and watch this show?" God, do I have to! <laughs> and it turned out that it was like the first run in the, it was the Littleton Theatre yeah, or some dead yeah. small theatre. Well, it is. Who, who could have seen it happening though from there? Wow. Well, here's a little link for you. The chat. <clears throat> who played Rocky in that production you're talking about, was a, was a man called Rainer Burton. Yeah. Rainer, was, Rainer was brought out to play Rocky and to direct the show in New Zealand, on the New Zealand oh, tour. Jeez. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. 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 It, all, it, it all ties, it all ties up. up. Well, which, which also takes you into the George Miller thing of how he likes to have um, certain, he keeps people around him, like Hugh. Going from um, um, what, what Mad Max, well, Mad Max to, one to, to Fury, Fury Road, yeah. one, one to Fury Road, and, yeah. and we were talking. We were talking to Adam, weren't we, um, about about, about the, the films he's worked on for George, and it's incredible that it's a real feeling of like family for the production. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the genre is, but he seems to keep the same people around him, which is one absolutely fantastic. I really like that. I like it too. I mean, I like that he acknowledges he gets people who. Obviously, they have to be able to do the job. <clears throat> yeah, the yeah. Lines, they have to be yeah. good. But he also then shows loyalty, and I think that probably, uh, in in an industry that's a little bit cutthroat, yeah. I think that bring, that brings out stuff in people that that they may not even know they're being that they're giving. But I think it brings it brings love to the, um, to the uh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah to the project. The yeah, production. Yeah. So, so, so initially when you, when you, uh, you were told by your agent to, to go down and do a reading and you were reading the max part, yeah. um, who was that in front of? Was that, was that, was that just George or was well, that? Uh, uh, oh, there was George and, and the casting right. agent. Um, I mean, look, you know, we are talking 44 yeah. years ago now. Um, so I, I remember going there. I don't remember an awful lot about what happened in there, apart from the fact that he, he also um, asked everybody who came to tell a joke. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> As you do, I, yeah. No, I don't remember the joke right. that yeah. I told. I, I wish I did. Um, lots of uh, Several of the other cast members told me they remember the joke they, they told. I reckon they're lying. I reckon they've just thought of a better joke oh, since I bet, then. I bet, yeah, but I bet. I'll put my hand up and say, no, I don't remember the joke <laughs> I told. Uh, but, but that was part of his audition process. Oh, my God. So, so at what point after that, did, were you told on the day that you got the position or you got a, you got a role but you didn't know which one? Or when did uh, you know that you were going to play this character called Kundalini? Um, look, I, I don't know how long it was afterwards. Um the main thing I remember is when I did find out find out that I was doing the role, I was I somehow got connected to go and meet the other cast members, particularly the um, uh, the members of the gang, the acolytes. Uh, um, and I went to a house, a very a fabulous house on uh, Lang Road. Centennial Park, which is now like uh, it's a, it's a dress circle oh, wow. um, address, yeah. Sydney. At right. that point, at that point, it was quite run down. Um, and Hugh Keys Byrne was living in that house with 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 several other very good actors and performers. And but that was the meeting place where the first time I met Hugh and uh, and Tim Burns and um, oh, and the Dave boy, yeah. Brands. Um, and we kind of met around there several times, kind of almost our own little production meeting to kind of, you know, get to know each other and, it, yeah, it built from there. Uh, w w wow. When you initially got the character there of Kundalini, did, was there any, like, you know, where did the glasses come from, the, the, the iconic uh, love heart glasses? Because it's so... It's the character is so strong, and everybody remembers Kundalini. I think you stole the show a bit from Mad Max One because everybody remembers Kundalini. You know, you... you're very, you're very kind. Um, the um, the glasses were were the idea. Well, 
I was going out with um, a, a, a lovely woman, uh, an actress called Candy, my very dear friend. She's godmother to my children. And when I got the role, um, Candy owned a pair of those Lolita heart-shaped sunglasses. And when I saw, and it wasn't until I saw the um, the, the, the costume that I got, the, 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 red, the red outfit. Yeah. The little light bulb. Where I saw Candy wearing these heart-shaped sunglasses, and I thought, "How cool it would be to, for this sort of macho psychopath <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. to to be wearing a very, very what would be considered a very effeminate yeah. um, item of club." And of course, the it related to the uh, the character Lolita in in Stanley Kubrick's film of the same yeah. name, and. Yeah. So yeah. I just I just liked the sheer position of of that those glasses to this you know psychopath character yeah. or absolutely sane freedom fighter depending on what side of the story you believe. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We're with you on that hundred percent. But um, so initially, um, when you put the glasses on, etc., and, and had the look. Um, what did George say? Did did because because you know as as that was your you sort of brought that to the role. What what was the thoughts on from his side? Well, I I don't recall the specific moment when he saw those, but George absolutely, I think he absolutely trusted all of yeah. us to bring what we wanted to bring to the screen, and. I don't recall any moment where he went, "Oh yeah, like those." I, I would be I would be making that up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what I do recall, and it's only really in retrospect, is how much George cast us because he trusted us to bring something of ourselves yeah. to these and flesh them out. Um, I'm saying that now. I wish I had realised that more then, because. Yeah. I didn't understand until it was too late that I could have done a lot more things with my role, but I had never done film before. Yeah. I'd done stage. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, my, my um, for instance, my theory on my performance was, hey, I'm going to be, you know, uh, 10 metres high on the screen. So, and I've been used to working theatre where you work yeah. reasonably yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I was bringing everything in and internalising it wrong this was mad max was a film where you could explore the character in a big way and several of the actors in the film knew that and i think some of those actors is one of the reasons why they work so well yeah. on the screen mm -hmm. um i i would love to have had a second take on things i would love to have had a rehearsal period where uh before we shot but we didn't it was yeah. bang bang yeah, bang. yeah. Yeah. Um, George trusted us. Yeah, it does seem that George does allow not not just the actors, but the whole the whole production to, in a way, to sort of find find the way of the film. And he he just sort of does a little bit of corralling, but f from the various people we've talked to, um, yeah. which. That's but of course, until uh, until you work with him, you don't know that. And as you're saying, if you're used to to a stage director and and the stage production, you will do this. Yeah. And until you work with somebody, you don't know how far you can go because he might just no, that's not the way that I want it done. Of course, you also have to remember that this was his drink. He was getting, he was getting pressure. Um, yeah, uh, from day one, he was under immense amount of pressure. Yeah. yeah, especially especially given you know that he he lost his leading lady before she shot a single frame. Yeah, and 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 his stuntman was you know with, with a broken yeah. leg. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, clearly you know about that yes. incident, and you know, uh, for those who don't, it was it was um, you know um, when uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I'm just sit here. Yep, go for it. When Grant Page was on the way out to a location with the leading lady Rosie Bailey on the back of a motorcycle, which is of course something which would never happen on any film set these days, and a semi trailer came across the path in front of them, and um, and Grantly had the presence of mind to realise that unless he dropped the bike dropped and slid it, yeah. the leg, yeah. 
Yeah. They were going to die. So he went, okay, broke a leg, yeah. bang, broke yeah. their legs. So George was being hammered by by everything right from the beginning. And um, in some ways it's a miracle he, he didn't, you know, a, a miracle that he got a film in yeah. the camp. Yeah. It, it, it wow. looked like, um, as I said, because everybody, all the actors brought their A game because the, you know, the gang, everybody is really believable. Everybody looks like you're having great fun filming. Was it fun on during the filming? Because it, it looks, oh, it looks it a was, scream. It looks brilliant. The energy around the entire thing was was palpable, and and I'm, I'm talking about off screen as well because we we. You know, it wasn't like we, we, we decided, oh, we're going to go all method acting on this. We just did. We, we, it wasn't like some yeah. sort, of, sort of this is the way we'll go. We just went that way. So, and the big thing that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the big thing that happened for, for me um, was when we somehow managed to convince George and Byron Kennedy, because we were up in yeah. Sydney, the, uh, the production was down in, uh, based in Melbourne. We convinced uh, George and Byron that they should send um, our motorcycles to Sydney so that we could become one with our machines. Yeah. yeah. I had only ridden a 250cc motorcycle before then. And he went uh, to Zed Jeez, Tim, that's, Tim that's Burns, a jump. The first motorcycle Tim Burns ever jumped on was a Z1000. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we had them in Sydney for, I think, uh, at least about a week or a couple of weeks. And then we, we rode them down to Melbourne. Yeah. We, we dressed in, our, in all of our um, um, uh, stage yeah. gear. We loaded up the bikes with sleeping bags and, and we dressed the bikes so that they – and we took a big loop inland and we rode our bikes down to Melbourne. So you did a proper uh, road trip. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, it was, Which, it, your a road trip. You were bond. You were bond, <laughs> or you break. It was hugely instrumental yeah. in yeah. in bringing that group of actors, that, that the kind of the four lead uh, acolytes together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and you know, I I you know, we be, I became far more confident on the bike. I and in fact, I dropped the bike on the way down. I had a I came off at speed. Um, and luckily lost it on some loose gravel, took a, a, was getting a little bit too cocky, yeah. <laughs> hit it too hard. Lost, Surely lost. not. I find that so hard and, to believe. Ended up, ended up in some long grass on the end of the road. I've told, I've told this story a few times at, um, at Mad Max events, and um, I, uh, I came off, and, and the car behind me pulled up behind me and stopped and went, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay if you could just... My friends were on ahead there. If you could sort of let them know that what's happened and get them to come back and give me a hand, but let them know that I'm okay. So they left you. And oh, so the guy drove off. <clears throat> and when the others arrived back, I heard that this guy had pulled up. They'd stopped because they realised I wasn't yeah, with them. Yeah. And the car pulled up alongside, and the guy yelled out at them, "Your mate's gone over the edge." <laughs> And they left. <laughs> so they freaked out yeah. and came back. Oh my and gosh. I was sitting back, sitting on the steaming Z1000, rolling up a seat. <laughs> <And> a <rally. laughs> it, it was a good job George wasn't with you then because he probably would have put that in the film and asked you to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what a great idea. Brilliant. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah, yeah I've got a better yeah. idea than the yeah. hand. I've got this giant yeah. <laughs> bike jump. Yeah. 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 It'll save on stunt, then. So, so, yeah. so, so when, yeah. a, when about did you, did you find out in the film that you were going to do the iconic scene when you're chasing after the car with the chains? Oh, well, I knew that. That was, that was all scripted. That was all clear. Um, people sort of think that that was an amazing stunt. Yeah. It was broken down... It was broken down to be very, very safe. I mean, I mean, most of us did our own stunts in the in the yeah. film. Um, um, uh, and Grant Page, you know, probably the best man in yeah. the world to have to have been in that position. And honestly, when you break down the shots of that scene, there's not the only thing there that could be remotely dangerous is when I kind of throw myself and kind of roll, clutching my my hand. But even that, 
Yeah, honestly, it it looks a lot it looks a lot hairier, as we might say, than it actually yeah. is. Which is what it's a cinema. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I remember the first time I I saw Mad Max one. I found that really harrowing. That you know, <laughs> you know, with the loss of the hand, it was like, oh my god, I've never seen this in a film. You know, it was, it was very, <laughs> very gritty. Uh, yeah. And and then and then also later on when Hugh's time. When, when you meet sort of Max's wife and Hugh sort of you know this is Kundalini, he wants his hand back. That was that that line is become legendary within the film. Did did you ever? Well. You know, at what point after the film came out did you realise? Hold on, this isn't like a little film from Australia anymore. This is, this is going global. Um, I probably realised it when it went global, to be right. honest. But mm. when we first saw it on the screen, <clears throat> excuse me, when we when I first saw it on the screen, I went, oh, <laughs> okay, it, it it clearly was bigger and sort of more impressive than I had sort of maybe I'd given it credit yeah. for. The original, the original cut that I saw was a director's cut was about 25 minutes longer than the than the one that ended up in the cinema. Oh, All right. And I remember, I remember seeing the, um, the cinema cut and, and being kind of, I don't know, peeved that, Lots of the little linking bits of the uh, that, that, that cut out so much of what I used to call the acting yeah. bits. That's, yeah. You know, there's so much of the little nu nuances of the performance be, had been taken out. But having said that, looking at the success of the film, you might have to acknowledge that I'm not a filmmaker and George Miller is a bloody filmmaker yeah. and he knew what he was doing. Yeah. So clearly... Yeah. Clearly, he made the right choices. Yeah. Oh my God! So yeah, you yeah. can you can just imagine the person who uh, stopped initially when you fell off your bike, you know, a, a couple of years later, going, "Hold on, that's the entire crew from Mad Max." It's like, hey, yeah, I, actually, it's, I've never I've never thought of that. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if that person somewhere like because of course the film it wasn't released until seventy nine, yeah. two years right. after I got it. I wonder if that person I went to see the film and went, what? what? Hang about. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, hang about. I bet them. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that that geezer who fell off his bike somewhere around Albury, Wodonga? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and they cut me from the final shots. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, they weren't <laughs> filming then. Oh, okay. Uh, quite. So, so um, on the – there's a load of um, – we've had a load of questions uh, – also, what about the hands? Somebody reckoned that your amputated hand uh, went off and starred in one of the Adams Family films. Is thing? I don't know if oh, the I don't know if there's any truth in yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a that's a. Uh, I, I, I've suggested that in the past that my dismembered hand has had a, a longer and more enduring career as an actor than I have. <laughs> did Did you see Paul um, the uh, fan poster I sent to you uh, of the what Mad Max Two should have been? Where there is the poster, there yeah. is yourself and Johnny the boy because technically you two guys survived the film, so they. Well, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn my screen now, yeah. and you will ah, see. Ah, sweet, awesome, yes. awesome. Yeah. So that's that's the work of my very good friend Melvin. Yeah, Zed. Melvin is a. Uh, ah, that's Melvin. Melvin yeah, ah, he ah. sent it to me yesterday, Melvin. <laughs> Uh, have you seen yeah. his documentary, by the way, when he's done the archaeology archaeologist of the wasteland? Have you, have you seen yeah. that? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, Melvin, we're checking out. Yeah. Um, I met Melvin about, I don't know how many years ago it was, when he rang me and asked if he could interview me for this, um, interview me, and he, he turned up here with a, uh, with a camper van outside my house, and he came in with his, with his uh, girlfriend and interviewed me and um i really liked the guy i really sort of got his passion we've stayed very good friends he met him each time in australia i've been at uh, met him in japan and he was the first guy i thought of because of his artwork I, I, i'll go back a bit i spoke to melvin when i when in when in melvin interviewed me i told him how when i heard that max 2 was going to be made I bumped into George Miller one 
one day at, at a uh, <coughs> excuse me at a cafe in Sydney called the Tropicana, which is quite near um, where Kennedy Miller have their um, uh, headquarters in Kings Cross. Ah, okay. I, I, I sort of pitched to him the idea that whatever his story was for Max 2, whoever the main antagonist was, that there might be something going on to Max that it doesn't, it couldn't possibly be that antagonist. And it turns out that it's, it's Kundalini with one hand and Johnny the Boy with one foot on some, <laughs> on some, on some weird uh, trike affair yeah. and that we are the ones wreaking havoc. So Melvin made that awesome. poster based based on my um, on my supposition on my on my pitch to George. Uh, um, of course, George um, ignored, which because he had a very 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 good idea already in mind. <laughs> Fair enough. I think I think yeah. it definitely has to come out as a graphic novel or something because this is this is it's too good a story to to miss. You know yeah. what what would have happened with these two well, guys? Yeah, I mean I'm you know I, I I thought it was a not a bad idea for a uh, to create a, a a linear part of the story, but then then again George has kind of almost made a point of removing the stories from each other yeah. in a way. There's, there's obvious lines that come through and lots of lots of references, especially in Fury Road. There are so many little references to past oh, yeah. films. But he's kind of quite cleverly, I think, made sure that it's that it stands alone. Uh, that you don't necessarily need the whole know the whole backstory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you do know it, all the better. Yeah. You've got all those yeah. references coming through. So, look, I, I I forgive George for not casting me in the second film. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We've got to get you in the next one. Get get you in the ne in Furiosa, the next one. So, a quick yeah. question, Paul. Uh, you have possibly the world's best merch ever. We are yeah. all going to be placing our orders straight after this. Do you have a website, and how can people contact it and buy your amazing merchandise? Yeah. Um, well, I do. Thank you for asking. I uh, just have to hit me up at. Uh, Kundalini madmax.com. Uh, or you know, if you if you can't find that, which you should yeah, be able we to put the links. Hit me, up on my, hit me up on my Facebook page. I'm on Paul Kundalini Johnstone. Awesome. Yeah, we will and, add the links to this uh, this website uh, to, yeah. to the stream. And the merch, uh, again, I must give credit to Melvin because when I um, uh, I decided to make some merch, I was actually inspired by um, uh, Steve Bisley, who's a good friend, he lives quite oh. close. I see if they're better, Steve. Yeah, of course. He, <clears throat> after we first went to Japan together, he decided to make a line of merchandise and did very well out of it, um, T-shirts and what have you. So I decided to go down the same road, but I didn't want to just take a photograph from the film and stick it on. I wanted to do something different, yeah. and I immediately, immediately thought of Melvin because I think his Melvin's like like ultra realism work. I mean, I I just you know, is that is that one of your shirts? Awesome, incredible! It oh, it's brilliant. Totally. I mean, brilliant. to me, that looks more like me than I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's only, uh, only the shades. It may, yeah. um, so I, he was the first guy I thought of when I thought of making some merch. So. Um, I've got this T-shirt. I've got another T-shirt that Melvin designed. Um, 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 the the, the Kundalini wants his hand back one, and I've got another one with a 40th anniversary on it. And so, yeah, all of that's on my website. So hit me up there if you if you if you'd like to have a look or contact me on my Facebook. And the beer and the beer coolers as the well. The beer coolers are amazing. Oh, yeah. The yeah. stubbies, they're brilliant. <laughs> if I was a good marketer, I would have had all the stuff exactly, here. Exactly. Yeah. Ready to go, but I I haven't. Um, so, um, and I won't, I won't leave any blank space here by running off to get it, but yeah, it's all on my website. I've got the, that, that was actually one of my favorite items is that if, uh, is the, is the beer holder yeah. and mm -hmm. it's got, that, it's got, it's got this image on it. And yep. also on the other side, it's got my hand hanging from a chain <laughs> and, and then I called it, the, I called it the, the, the Kundalini left-handed 
um, beer holes. <laughs> beer oh, that's a bit leftist, uh, though. So, and, and on my website, as you'll see if you go there, um, um, I say, comes with free instructions for conversion to right-handed use. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Awesome. So, how, how have once um, the film came out and it sort of started to glow, go global, how did that affect your life? Because you, you, you're not now just in a small Australian film, you're in a worldwide phenomenon that virtually everybody on the planet's seen and loves. Yeah, um, well, my. I didn't do. Uh, I did another small part in, a, in another Australian film called Running on Empty, mm -hmm. um, and all the rest of my work was theatre work. Yeah. Also, oh, okay. around the same time, I'm also a drummer, um, so and I'm a singer. Oh, wow. So I was kind of making my and, and by the way, got into doing voiceover work. So my singing work. Um, I was singing in bands and playing drums in bands in Sydney uh, after Mad Max. And yeah. through that singing work, I started getting um, uh, jingle singing for, for, uh, for, for commercials and advertising. And then a couple of people asked me to read uh, just a speaking line, like a voiceover, yeah. Yeah. as part of it. And then I started getting more of the voiceover work and more of the. And then I'd go away for, and, and I was making a good living from doing. My live uh, gigs with my bands yeah. and voice over in the day. Then I'd go away for a tour drumming with a band and I'd come back and all the voice over work had fallen away. So I kind of worked out where my, um, where my uh, bread was buttered in a way. And I, I made a sort of active decision to not go on tour anymore. Yeah. I would only play with bands in Sydney. And that, that created, that, created a, a ladder for my voiceover work. So what ended up happening was that I would get offered gigs in films or whatever, but honestly, it was going to cost me money to go and do that gig. Yeah. yeah. Because I'd be away from Sydney for two weeks, oh, and then when I came back, my voiceover work would have yeah. dropped away. So I kind of I reached a crossroads and went, here's where my uh, bread is buttered. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the singing and voiceover sessions as my main game, yeah. and I will be an actor and a musician only in Sydney. So right. I made yeah. that decision, and it ended up being a pretty good one. Yeah, awesome, awesome, amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a question here from Charlie Roop. Uh, something about: Do you do Roop. DJing? Yeah, okay, yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds surprised. Yeah, we have all Charlie the info Roop. on you, sir. We have all the info. Yeah, uh, what's my inside leg measurement? Um, <laughs> um, Charlie Roop's taking his name from good sources there. Um, yeah, I, 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 I about a year or a year and a half ago, I met a young fella who contacted me through my, um, <clears throat> excuse me, through my website. And um, I ended up meeting up with him. Uh, he lived in Sydney. Nice, nice fella. Um, big Max fan. But he also, somewhere in our conversation online, he mentioned um, that he did vinyl DJing. Well, where I'm sitting now, directly across from me here, there are one, two, three, four, five shelves a metre long each, all packed. Oh, wow. Up. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Impressive. And I've I've never um, never sold vinyl. I kept all my vinyl yeah. from the. Uh, of course, of course. So this, and then when I pulled out a couple of things, um, he was impressed with the um, with the uh, this guy. This guy's name was Ant. Uh, he was Ant was very impressed with because I, I re I'm really into soul and um, northern soul yeah. and funk. Ah, oh, brilliant. Sixties and early seventies funk and northern soul is my the stuff that yeah. So rare, you know, rare, rare groove stuff, yeah. Yeah, I, and I pulled out a couple of these, and he went, "Oh man, I do, um, uh, I do um, vinyl DJing at a at a, a a place in in Enmore in Sydney, a place that during the day is a um, is a vinyl record store, and during the night it's a bar right. that specialises specialises in whiskies 
and craft beers. Oh, gosh. Hell, yeah. Oh. Results, um, results. What a terrible mix. <laughs> the place is called um, Cottonmouth Records in Enmore. Yeah. So anyone in Sydney, get along there and support them. And he said, you want to come along and do a, you know, do an hour set? I went, I'd love to. So I came along and he, he'd done about an hour and a half and I came on and I went, well, I don't want to do an hour set. I'm going to do the rest of the night. So I ended up. <laughs> I ended, took up, the, ended up doing the rest of the night and um, it went down really well and I really enjoyed doing it and then said to the uh, the uh, owners of the bar, you know, if you ever got a night where you want me to come along and do the whole night, um, I'd be interested. So, yeah, I've started doing that. I've only done three or four nights there, but it's something I really enjoy doing because it's a very, very cool bar. It's a nice mixed crowd and a good area of Sydney. It's kind of... Uh, Enmore's, you know, the crowd at this place is, you know, it's hippies and punks and straights and gays and awesome. people and, and, you know, and it's great. It's a really cool scene. So, yeah, I do that every now and again. Unfortunately, of course, it's not happening at the moment yeah. because the bars can't open. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my Hopefully, God. That is awesome. I have a question here from, do you know AD and Linda from the Mad Max 2 Museum? No, I have never met them, and I really look forward to it. I, I um, yeah. I've been in contact with Adrian online, yeah. and I've I've seen the little documentary about his story, and I like the guy. I don't. I've never met him, but I just awesome. I just really think this is a really cool couple of people. Uh, oh. I love his passion, and I love that is it, Linda is his wife yes. or his partner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love, I, I just was really moved by her support for him. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. definitely. And, and I'm, I, I just love it when people kind of take a leap of faith yeah. and, 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 and have it rewarded like that. Yeah, definitely. And, and that is a big leap. I mean, to go from the UK to Australia oh, yeah. on, yeah. on, yeah, and I mean, just, not just Australia. But, to, but yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, hell, back, yeah. The, the back of the back of bloody beyond. <laughs> yeah, well, we have we have a question from those guys for you. Uh, so they're big fans as well of Kundalini. Everybody's a big fan of Kundalini. So uh, they want to know which is your favourite Mad Max film and which is your favourite character. And you can't pick yourself. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Um, I look honestly. I find them. They are all so completely different. Yeah. My favourite, my favourite um, um, Mad Max film is Mad Max One. Yeah. Um, yeah. There might be, there might be other, the other films might be better made, uh, more crafted. Um, but you've got to take a film, you've got to look at the sum of its parts and how it, how how it works. And honestly. I see. I look. There are so there are so many flaws in Mad Max One that it's sometimes amuses me that they got through. However, there's there's a spirit in that it film. Is. Yeah. And I can't set. I, I can't be objective here, guys. I mean, yeah. I can't separate the experience that I had from the film that's on the screen. So, I'm. Um, I have no objective perspective on this. But right. I just think it's such a astonishing. Given putting it in context, it is the most astonishing piece of filmmaking. So, oh, you know, Max One by a Country Mile, yeah. and then Property Two yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, it, it 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 was genuinely groundbreaking. Totally. Which is, yeah. as you say, for for such a low budget film with all the pressures that George was under yeah. from all directions. Um, oh, to produce yeah. such an amazing, which, 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 all right, you say there, there are, if you look at it closely, there are things you could sort of pick holes in, but in general, it holds together tremendously well, yeah. uh, and and it, it's it's the classic where the sum of the parts is way way bigger, yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and I think that's 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 why I think I think also has, has been because of the 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 cast, it looks like you all got on so well, that energy from everybody brings their A-game in it. I mean, it just blew every other film out of the water because there's, you know, there's that much energy 
and George is filming it, but you can see it, the passion of everybody in it. You know what I mean? It's, well, it's yeah, we, very, we, very we, special. We, we all believed in it, and um, it wasn't just a gig, and we were, we were kind of – we were living it. Um, you know, we, we rode those motorcycles 24 hours a day. We lived in our costumes. We, we, uh, we, rode, we rode our bikes to and from locations. We, we, we um, uh, the vigilantes, who were the Melbourne motorcycle group, who yeah. were our extras, we went to their club, we hung out. I mean, we wow. were, you know, we were doing lots of things we shouldn't do. And, and that really <laughs> did... That, you know, and we were we were playing the, the actors who were playing the acolytes were playing tricks on the actors who, who played the, <laughs> and it, it was huge, huge energy. It was just yeah, it was huge energy. So yeah, pretty special. Amazing. Were you? Um, was there any other strange or fun incidents while filming? Because we I, we heard about uh, uh, Johnny the boy with a handcuff scene when they actually uh, Mel Gibson sort of. Uh, they used the key in, in the handcuff, didn't they? He locked him into the handcuff, th- threw the key away, you know, dramatically. And then, that, of course, they then couldn't find the key. In this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, the, the things I remember, I mean, these are the, we've spoken, I've spoken about these a few times, so some people may have heard the stories, but we were kind of, so, the acolytes were so much of a, a gang that when we we kind of when the when the, the the actors playing the cops arrived in Melbourne to start shooting their scenes, we were um, the apartment that we had a, a house that we had been rented for, for us to stay in. We were kind of we went into their place and wrote messages in what looked like blood on the walls <laughs> and like you know yeah. like abusing them and and saying we're going to get them. And, we, we were playing all those sort of games. Um, it was it was like it was like the, the older version of, of uh, going to schoolboy camp and short sheeting someone's bed or all that. All that. Yeah. Um, there was a huge amount of energy around it. Yeah. Um, I've got I've got a question here from uh, one of the war boys or war girls over in the US. Uh, they said uh, she said. Uh, Whisper. Uh, whisper. So she said, uh, at the end of the film, did they allow you to keep the hand? Oh, oh, I wish. <laughs> no, um, I've been asked that. I've been. If I, you know, if, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. Of course, and we, we, you know, we thought it was going to be successful, but the things that I wish I'd kept, yeah, uh, not necessarily in this order, were would have been. Uh, the originals of these. Yes. Hey, oh, wow. Hey. wow. Um, well, I don't, that's not the original, yeah. of no. course. No. Um, but the main thing would have been, oh, man, the, the motorcycle. Oh, because yeah, at the end cool. of the film, they sold the, all of those uh, Z1000s. Oh, gosh. And I could have bought it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I even heard about it or even if I, but um, just imagine. If you own the original, the original yeah. said, oh "Yeah, God, yeah." You might be you might be aware that um, that one of the original motorcycles does exist. Um, All right. You, there's a a, a a guy called Dale Bench, who's a very good friend of mine, a good friend of all of us. Uh, Dale was one of the acolytes who were the extras in the film. Uh, 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 sorry, the vigilantes, yeah. the motorcycle gang in Melbourne, who played the extras in the film. Now Dale's the guy who did the um, the uh, wheel stand and the, and the mono. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. The, the, yeah, 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 yeah. So and Dale's a fantastic guy. Well, I've got to know him really well. I met him again about ten years ago, and we went to Japan together. And lovely, lovely dude. Well, that motorcycle that he rode in the film turned up. Somebody had it, and I don't know how. They worked it out that it was Dale's motorcycle, that it was his uh, Z. Right. But Z- Dale had rec- uh, you know uh, records of the uh, chassis and VIN and all that stuff, so he yeah. was able to verify, yes, this is the actual motorcycle I rode in the film. Oh, and those people have now um, um, restored the bike, and it looks beautiful. Spot on, so, yeah. Ah, oh, brilliant. brilliant. At least there is one of those motorcycles in that film still yeah. running. 
Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, so, fantastic. out of all the Mad Max festivals you are invited to and you've been to, uh, which is your favourite? Which is is Japan or you know where, where's which is your what favourite? out for you? Well, you know, look, it's interesting that the the events in Australia and the events in Japan are are a really different energy about them, but there's a there's a commonality. And that is that the people are just awesome. Yeah. Um, Japan was a real eye opener because I first went to Japan in um, in 2012, and that was on uh, that was Dale Bench. I think you'd contacted me, yeah. and yeah. Um, and a few of us went over, and I went over completely on a leap of faith. I had no idea what was going to happen there. I um, I kept on trying to get. You know, okay, send me the schedule. Send me all the. I'm used to going on the road and with bands or in theatre and and getting an itinerary. Here's where you're going to be staying. Here's where you're going to where you're going to be on this date. Here's how you're travelling. Here's the schedule. There was none of that. And for a while, I was going, I was going oh, look, you know, this is, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go. This is, this is, you know, not, not well organised enough. And something told me to make a leap of faith and. It was one of the great times in my life when that leap of faith isn't just vindicated, it's rewarded yeah. many, many times yeah, because over, yeah. the, the, the people I met there, uh, especially Tom Tomokio, the guy who runs the, the yes. events over there, yeah. and and all the people I met through, through him, just some of the nicest people I've ever met. Oh. And they were the first events that I went to, really. Uh, and... It was after that that there started to be some Max events here. Yeah. And I suddenly realised, oh, wow, the Max fans in Australia are awesome as well. It was, I guess, the Max, the ones in Japan were the first big ones I went to. So and what, what, then, what year was that, roughly? Uh, 2012. Yeah. 2012. Uh, okay, the, yeah. First time I went. And then I went again in 2013 and 2014. And then I helped, I sort of... At the end of the first one, I said to Tom, "Hey man, you know, I'll if you do this again, I'll help you. I'll become your liaison guy, and I'll I'll yeah, say yeah. to the yeah. factors here, this is actually a really cool thing to do. You, if you don't do it, you you you, you well, it should do You're yourself out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, and I said, look, please don't feel obliged to bring me along again. i you know, well, the next year I helped him get a bunch of people, and luckily he invited me again. He ignored my 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 uh, telling him he didn't have to bring me. And then the following year in 2016, I did it again. I mean, I think 2015 I took um, I went with Tim Burns and Joanne Samuel, and then the following year it was it was Roger Ward and um, and Steve Lee. <laughs> and look, you know. <laughs> Each year they get bigger yeah. and bigger in Japan, uh, and Japan is just an awesome country to visit. It's culturally rich, and I've, I've since going back to your question. After yeah. that, I then started going to the Australian events, and it was so lovely to find out that it's it was the same kind of emotional uh, connection. The people here were freaking awesome. Yeah. You know that. that uh, just as enthusiastic, in fact, even more so in some ways, because the here they the, the cars connection and the yeah yeah and and the fact that for a lot of these people who lived in places where car culture was everything, it actually meant more here than yeah. which which had a, a a stronger relationship to high powered um, automobiles than yeah. Japan did. The Japan people saw it for a different reason. Yeah. They loved it for the wide and spaces. They loved it because it was a samurai story. Yes. Um, yes. They saw different things in it. But the energy of the events, and each of the events here have been getting bigger and bigger. So yeah. uh, the big uh, 40th anniversary thing we did last year uh, down in Maryborough was like was the pinnacle. That was... Oh, gosh, yeah, wow. Uh, it was... Two, yeah. And we had 12 of the actors from Max 1 at that event. Oh, my gosh. 12? Blimey. That's important. The biggest yeah. gathering. There, I don't think there will be, ever be another one. Probably I hope there is. Yeah. But the chances are one of us will fall off a twig before then. So, you know. 
Yeah, I, I can definitely relate to what you're saying about the car culture um, with with the, with the Aussies, um, because compare it with uh, um, the the Wasteland Weekend people that we go and see over in uh, the Mojave Desert, and obviously the Americans have the same sort of um, affinity for the V8 um, and yeah. and big vehicles, and I think it, it's whereas in the UK it's it and probably the, and the same with Japan, it, it's that much harder to to be really elaborate because there are fewer places to go in australia there's loads of places you can go with one in the yeah. states it's the same yeah. and the vehicles which they produce and they build for wasteland are extraordinary yeah. and, and i imagine it could be the same for for us as well it's the, uh, the two countries are weirdly similar yeah um, I, yeah, the, the, the Wasteland Weekend looked amazing. I, you know, if at some point, you know, they want to invite me over there, we, we, we've, we've played it. For we, we, the, yeah, we've played it for the last four years running. Uh, we last year it was their ten year anniversary, and we were the first band to ever take snow cannons to the Mojave <laughs> Desert. <laughs> well, we are English, you know. It's <laughs> yeah. Also, ne- also next year we're we're playing the Mad Max forty year anniversary uh, Mad Max two uh, at Broken Hill, yeah. Silverton, at Silverton. Um, so yeah. I, I I have an official invite for you from Ad and Linda. Oh. And we will be coming over. Uh, it's our first ever Australian uh, festival. And uh, we would love to have you on stage with us. You and Emil Minty. Wow. Yeah, that would well, be good. That would be great. I've, um, I've been wanting to go out to, uh, to Silverton for, for a very long time. I, I'd also like to uh, meet Adrian because he's, a, he, he, he's an impressive individual. I've never met him. Yeah. So it'd be great. Um, um, yeah, I'll um, I'll look forward to that if that oh, happens. Brilliant. If it happen, I'd like to do everything to help make it happen. Definitely. Uh, also, also, so, there's some very, cool. very big um, comic cons in Europe in the, in the UK, and at some point we would love to try and get you over because you know we've got to get Kundalini over to the UK. That would just be. I'd love to. Um, I'd love to do. It. I mean, Steve Bisley and I have talked a bit about trying to see what we can do to, 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 to come to some events in Europe. Um, um, I've been in touch with a couple of guys in, who are involved in the, the, the Cult of Chrome yeah, yeah. Uh, guys. It uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. just seemed like a fantastic mob. I really, the, the, the interviews I've seen and um, you know, I, just really, I just really like the energy and what they're, what they're doing. I'd love to get over there, love to get to the UK. So, you know, it, it just sort of blows me away that this um, – I, I, I've used this line a fair bit. People, people often, and when you do Q and A's, they say they start with the words, "When you were doing the film, and you know what's going to happen next." They're going to ask, "When you're doing the film, did you imagine that?" that yeah, you know, blah blah yeah, blah. Yeah. My, my, it's become almost a stock answer to that. Is um, if somebody had told me in 1977 that 40 years later I'd be, you know, flown to Japan and treated like a rock star for this film. I would have said to them, I'll have what you're smoking. <laughs> so it's, it really blows me away and it's, 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 um, it's really moving. It's really kind of, you know, it's when somebody at, at these events, when somebody comes up to you and from their heart tells you how much your performance and the still means to them, I think if you're cynical about that, you really need to have a look at your kind of, well, I don't know, your attitude to life because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm honoured by that. Yeah. And the first time yeah, I really right yeah. was, in, was in Japan where the treatment they gave, uh, I, actually I'm, I'm getting a little goosebumps. Here. Goosebumps, yeah. The way they, the way they um, revered us, and respected us was yeah. so moving, and then I got the same thing here from various people. So look, it's yeah, it, it, it does. It blows me away. So yeah, look, I'd love to get to Europe, and I oh, mean, God, that would, awesome. Or, or to, to, it's, so yeah, it, it's yeah. a very very interesting thing because as we just tour around the world, and we've done, we've interviewed quite a few um, actors from Mad Max on the show. The everybody is really nice the whole community is lovely everybody's got a real passion for the actors and for the vehicles and it, it, it's you know there's no 
egos and arrogance everybody is it's just love it is it, it's it's a phenomenal experience like with emil minty is such an amazing guy uh greg I is, yeah uh shell yeah. uh also all these people everybody is just awesome you know and there's so much love for mad max what is it like you know when you're sort of sat at home just thinking that you are a, a sort of a well-known icon around the world that is that's ha, ha, how does that affect your life it's got to be it's look it's not something i sit down and think <laughs> about that often yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I, and i think if i did start thinking about, gee, I'm an icon all over the world. I think, well, in that case, there's an old saying here, why don't you get some Viagra eye drops and take a long, hard look at yourself? <laughs> oh, uh, hey. Very good. You know, I, I, I don't think about it. I, I am honoured by it, but it's not something I, I sit around thinking. Yeah. It's only when I meet people who tell me, and that's what moves me. Yeah. And, you know, when, when you meet people who... And in the first time, I've had it happen here and in Japan. First time I was in Japan, I met a guy and he's, excuse me, I told you, never call me here. Um, that's just an alarm on my phone. Um, I meet a guy and he's weeping and he's saying, I cannot believe you are here. Wow, yeah. And I, when I heard that, I, it was just all I could do to kind of hold myself together because... It was just really touching, really moving, and I've had that here as well. So I, I, um, I really respect um, the love that I get, and you know, there's no other way that you can you can frame it any way you want. You can call it, you know, sort of fandom or this. It comes down to it, it's it's good energy, yeah. and I really really appreciate it from people. Mm. Yeah, d yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, I think we are going to... Is there anybody you'd like to do a shout-out? I think we're coming to the end of the show because I know you have your Australian football later on. So we don't want to we uh, don't interrupt you from that. Oh, can't do yeah. that. Actually, you know what? I had that wrong. That, that I thought my team was playing this afternoon, but they actually the whole schedule has been uh, thrown out because of COVID. Oh, right. oh, COVID and they, yeah. they, they played on Thursday night and got beaten. I'm a, I'm a Sydney Swan supporter. Right. Uh, in the okay. and um, uh, so uh, it's, I don't have to run off to a football game, but anyway, oh, that's, oh, that's um, good. I didn't want you. Yeah, I must admit, I've seen Aussie rules football a few times on the TV, and it's it looks awesome. I don't understand what the hell's going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, Aussie rules is one of those games that uh, suffers on television. Uh, you need it's so much better live. And when you see it live, you you understand the game a lot better. It's a it's a three sixty degree game. It's it's guerrilla warfare. <laughs> the rugby codes, the, the rugby codes are trench warfare. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, football, uh, what we call soccer here, but football and basketball and Aussie rules are three sixty degree games. The trouble is with Aussie rules, it doesn't translate to television right. well unless you know the game. Because of most codes of football, if the camera's following the ball, like, it's, it's, it's yeah. 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 In Aussie rules, the, what's interesting isn't where the ball is, it's where it's about to be, is what's interesting. Yeah. So yeah. it's a much game line. So I can understand that for people who have never seen the game, who see it on television, it's just like, it, it, you know, as they, they call it here, you know, the, the aerial ping pong is the derogatory <laughs> term for it. Uh, well, for, there's that classic um, um, thing of ice hockey, the Wayne Gretzky quote, uh, quote which is skate to where the puck's going to go to, not where it is. And it's, yeah. it must be the same. Yeah, so it's, you yeah, know, it's, the guy's uh, kicking from here, but you've got to be over. So the action needs to go over there, not follow the guy kicking. Is, is, and because it's so it, wide. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm that rarest of creatures. I'm a New Zealander, <laughs> which is a rugby country. Yeah. Who, who gets Aussie rules. <laughs> who, who became passionate about Aussie rules. Uh, which, you know, which if I go back to New Zealand and they find that out there, you can see their eyes. <laughs> play, you, know, you got no you chance. Be back in the no country, will you? And, yeah, right. exactly. Where's your passport? <laughs> yeah. Is it played on, a, uh, it looks like it's played on a cricket pitch. Is it played on like a rain pitch? Or is it? it is exactly it is played on, a, on, a, on an oval, on a cricket <laughs> oval. The game was originally designed by a couple of chaps in Melbourne who wanted to find a game of football that would keep cricketers fit during the, the off-season. Right. Yeah, 
Yeah. And it was based loosely on an Aboriginal game called Man Grook, where the Aboriginal fellas would play with this wicker type ball and you know they the, these guys adapted it to this it was kind of like rugby but not and yeah so they adapted it and it became a national sport wow. um yeah brilliant uh, absolutely amazing wow. I've, I've, i love watching it i have no clue what the hell's going on but it's great to watch <laughs> oh well, if you ever come out if you come to australia and you come to sydney i'll take you to a game i'll explain oh, it to you. awesome awesome so do you um so uh, with the website, uh, with the merchandise, because we've got a load of people on already excited. Um, oh, so great. Um, literally, we will be uh, putting all the orders in later on today. The the merch looks amazing, really does look amazing. Paul. Do you have a shout out yeah. for anybody, by the way? Anybody you'd like to? Be, uh... Oh, shout out. Yeah, look, my main shout out will be to to Melvin Z, yeah. who um, who designed all my merch and is my very good dear friend, and um, to Dale Bench, hey brother, how you going? And to um, to uh, Tom Tomokio and to Yoshi and all my friends in Japan, who who are very very dear to my heart, and I'm I, I, I'm missing seeing you guys, and I really hope that I can get back there again. I'm. I, I've expressed for many years my fondness for all of the people there, and um, yeah, look, I, I just wish them all well. But I just want to wish everybody really well around the world who's dealing with this 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 bucket of shit that we have to deal with at the moment, yeah. and and just beg you all to to be kind to each other and look after each other. And um, you know, the only thing certain in life is change. And this will change. This too will pass. Yeah. So, you know, I hope we're going to be as kind to each other as we can. So when we come through this, we're, we're actually in a better place. And I know that's, you know, that's kind of high hopes. But, you know, I hold my hopes high. So, yeah. It's the best place to hold them. Awesome. I agree. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think we are just going to, we're just going to log off in a moment. So, Paul, you have been an absolute awesome, awesome yep. guest. Really uh, good. We would, really good. thank you. Really uh, would love. Before I go, just to ask people to, I'm on Facebook, I'm Paul Kundalini Johnstone, and I'm on, um, my website is kundalinimadmax.com. Right. Dot com. And I'm also on uh, Instagram, um, um, Kundalini Mad Max. Get I don't get on there as often as I should. Yeah. But yeah, hit me up on hit me up on Facebook or get to my website and yeah. say get there. Definitely do the Facebook because I love that picture you 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 screen grabbed of um, joining the boy on in the back of that flatbed with the uh, with the the coffin on there. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a <laughs> lovely shot. That so guys, if yeah. you're guys out Definitely. there, check out. Check out Paul's uh, Facebook page. All, I'll put it, I'll put it yeah, in the we'll chat. Yeah, we've got all the links. Uh, also, Paul, we would love to have you back on at some other time as a guest because you are such an amazing guest. We would love to have oh, you back, you. sir. Uh, have Sure. I just have to, uh, If you have me back, I just have to remember everything I told you so I don't repeat myself. <laughs> so, uh, that doesn't stop us. doesn't stop us. <laughs> in fact, what I think what we'll probably do on another show is we'll get you and a few other Mad Max actors on. Because then it'd be quite nice yeah, sure. to get you sure. asking each other questions. That would be quite fun, actually. Yeah. Well, you know, um, we're a lot of us, several of us. Have been, I mean, Tim Burns has remained a very, very close friend of mine. Ever, I mean, I, I had a, I had a, um, even before Mad Max, I played poker every Monday night with a bunch of musicians and actors. Yeah. Tim, Tim joined that poker game in 1977, 78. No, and we, we still play together. We used to play. Fantastic. We used to play every fortnight, and then our, once our kids were grown up, we play now play every single Monday night. So Tim's a very dear friend. Steve Bisley's a really dear friend, um, and Roger Ward is just one of nature's He's great awesome. gentlemen. There's, we're all, you know, I'm, we're kind of blessed that we actually all really yeah. like each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and given the fact that you're all thrown together, maybe that 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 bonding trip on the road. Just, just oh, that, ready to seal it. Ready to seal it. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, there's no guarantee that when you're thrown into a cast of people together that you aren't necessarily going to like each other personally. Oh, yeah. But in this instance, we kind of, it kind of worked out. Yeah, and, and I guess there were no airs and graces and you were all sort of, right, we, we're not quite sure what's going on, but we're going for it. And you all yeah. had the same sort of ethos and a very Aussie thing, I guess. But there you go. 
Not that you're an Aussie. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Awesome, Paul. So uh, we'll have a chat after this. Uh, So um, after the show. So I'll give you a call back after this. And uh, maybe we'll try and get some more Mad Max 1 actors on uh, with yourself. And uh, we'll we'll have another session at another point. If that's good for you, sir. Yeah. Honestly, the coolest. But where's your hand? Where's your hand? Yeah. Hey. Unbelievable, Paul. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, thank you. Nice chatting with you. And, and good day, everybody out there in, in the world. And uh, come and say good day to me on Facebook. Awesome, guys. Yeah, we're, we're... And thank you, everybody. And we will see you soon. Uh, oh, well, see you next week on the next of Cult of uh, uh, on the Freak Show and the Cult of Vitae. Cheers, Paul. You have been an absolute star. Kundalini, everybody. Kundalini. Hey. Hey.